Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your Jabo SW pump to your Apex controller. Uh, so using the controller and a few sample pieces, we can use this, uh, this 10 volt port on the side here uh, to connect it to our Apex. Now the port should have a positive and negative terminal and also the tip will have a positive and negative terminal and I've already determined which is which for you so you don't have to guess. Uh, to complete this build, you will need some adapters like these, depending on how many pumps you need. Uh, you may need only one or two. You're going to need some wires to connect from the plugs to our wire harness that we're going to make that's going to adapt to the Apex controller. Um, and to finish the harness, we're going to need a Cat5 Ethernet cable. Any type of old Ethernet cable should work fine, uh, just as long as it's a standard Cat5 cable. And of course, we're also going to need our SmartWave controller with the 0 to 10 volt port on the side. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to hook up your uh, Jabo SmartWave controllers uh, to your Apex. It's a little bit more difficult than what they say in the instructions. Um, I could quote them, but it's something like simply just plug in a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack into this port, and then you're good to go basically to connect it right to the Apex. That's not exactly how it works uh, they do quote in the instructions that it is kind of diy so uh, i haven't seen a video on this yet at least not in english uh, so i wanted to kind of share this with you what i've kind of figured out so i have two of these controllers uh, we will be doing both of them um, i have my ethernet cable here just a small uh, three foot cable is going to work for me if you need a longer cable you can just use a longer one uh, and then these I found at Radio Shack. Um, this is what I found plugs into that port. It's not a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It's a coaxial DC power plug. Uh, let's see if that focuses. Four millimeter by 1.7 millimeter inside diameter. Uh, and the tip length is 9.5 millimeters. This is all I could find uh, locally. Uh, it, should, it should work. So basically what we have to do is use these terminals um, there's a positive and a negative on these terminals uh, basically to plug into this port and then wire them from the plug using some uh, cable like this or something similar whatever you have and hooking that up to one of these cables um, to the apex so one of the first things I did here is just take this protective um, like rubber coating off of the uh, cord that way you, you kind of expose the wires a little bit better and you can actually see um, where the colors of the wires are where those terminals are and that's pretty important and I'll, I'll share a diagram right now. That diagram basically shows um, I believe the clip down, it shows uh, which one's the positive and which one's the negative uh, for your variable speed port one and variable speed port two or three and four, depending on what port is open. So all we really have to do is find out which one of those cords is which, uh, make sure we write down the colors because not all of these are the same. This one I got from Osh because they had them there pretty cheap, but um, you can get them from anywhere and um, you could use the Apex ones if you'd like but they are really expensive and you're basically just cutting it up anyway. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up and find out which one uh, goes to the positive and the negative for variable speed port one and variable speed port two. Okay, so once you got all the, the sheathing stripped off of the cable, you expose all these smaller wires that are inside here. Um, now on this plug with the apex, we're only going to be using um, three and four and seven and eight. If you look across from the top, uh, numbers or wires from left to right, three and four and seven and eight. And I wrote down all the colors and everything. So um, one through eight is, you know, brown, brown, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, orange, and orange, white. So that means three and four are gonna be uh, green and blue, white, and then, then um, 
these seven and eight are going to be orange and orange white and it's marked with your ground your zero to ten and basically your negative and your positive so those are the wires that we're going to use uh, so we're going to go ahead and cut them strip them and then get rid of everything else okay so once you have your wires all cut down and uh, the ends are stripped to expose the bare wire you're ready to move on to the next step uh, so just set this aside and also keep in mind we have the orange white cable the orange cable the blue white cable and the green cable with this specific um, who makes this it's GE GE uh, three foot ethernet cable that's what you want to keep if you have a different brand ether ethernet cable it's going to be different um, but you can just use this chart right here to kind of figure it out um, I'll explain this one more time you're going to need cables three and four seven and eight and mine just happened to be green and blue white and orange and orange white and then there's kind of the conversion right there to where you know which one is the negative the positive for both variable speed one and variable speed two so we got that all uh, ready to go the next step is going to be moving on to these now I did go ahead and take the controller apart uh, to figure out on the inside of this um, if the, uh, the tip or the sleeve, which one was negative and positive, and the tip, which is that middle part that you see there, that is the positive, and the sleeve that you see uh, right there, that is the negative. So on the plugs, you have uh, this little plastic threaded piece that kind of goes over uh, right here to protect the solder joints and everything to keep that good. But the exterior, uh, this is what's going to be the negative, and to solder to that, it's going to be that outside terminal right there. Uh, and then the inner terminal, which, geez, well, basically inside there, that's going to be the positive, and that's going to be soldered onto that little terminal right there. Um, of course, what you could do is you could solder uh, these cables basically directly onto here, but I don't want to do that. I want to give myself a little bit of slack, a little bit of extra room, and um, yeah, basically just extra room just in case I want to unplug something. I have slack and I'm not tied into the short little three foot cord. So that's why I picked this stuff up. Um, you can run your, your ground and your positive wire through this one strip. It stays together. It's nice and neat. Um, and it's easy to tell the difference, black and white. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get my soldering iron and we're gonna get ready to solder these connections to here. And I'm, I might do, I don't know, maybe eight feet of cord if it's too much. I can always just kind of zip tie it up, but you never know, you know, if you're gonna want to put the controller somewhere else or move the pump onto a bigger tank. Uh, so it's good to have extra cord. I mean, I have 25 feet of it with this roll, so. Uh, it's good to have extra cord just in case you wanted to put it on a different tank. I'll probably really only use maybe two or three feet of it, but it's good to have extra. All right, so we'll get that set up and we'll start soldering. Okay, so we're outside right now to do the soldering and you can see how I have the white wire going to the middle terminal and the black wire is kind of up onto the outside there on the outer terminal. So I have white as my hot black is my negative I got this one done and we're just gonna go ahead and do this one just remember when you're soldering to uh, pretend the the terminals it's gonna make it a lot easier and also to pretend your wires so we're gonna go ahead and do that one too real quick and we'll be right back okay we got everything soldered up put the end caps back on I went ahead and just shot a little bit of hot glue on the end of these to uh, help strengthen it and keep any moisture or water or anything like that from going into the, the actual plug itself I don't ever plan on unscrewing these again so just a more permanent fix uh, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is get our cable that we made earlier and connect um, the two terminals for each one to each one of the individual cords okay so I got the first one connected up and you can see I got the negative um, connected to the green and black and then the positive with the white and blue wire and the white wire what I did is I just got some uh, hot glue, put some hot glue over those. That's just to help keep them insulated, to keep them from ever shorting out. But I'm also going to put, um, here it is right here, some shrink tube. So we're just gonna put little pieces of shrink tube over it uh, and then heat it up just to make it even more secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, this one right here and connect it to the other 
uh, outlet for the pump and then put the shrink tube on we'll be right back okay so that's basically how you do it all uh, you can see here I got my uh, little plug put into the controller and then the cords wound up and basically all we had to do was splice into this ethernet cable um, following the instructions you know, on this piece of paper telling you that uh, 3 and 4 are ground and 10 volt and then 7 and 8 are ground and 10 volt. And that's basically all you have to do for your variable speed 1 and variable speed 2 ports on your Apex. So now that we got it plugged in, it's all hooked up. And then for this, I just use some electrical tape. It's not the prettiest thing, but um, it works. So yeah, it's all hooked up. Let's try and plug it in and see how it works. Okay, so we got both of our pumps installed. We have one SW4 on the right hand side and the other SW4 is over here on the left. Taking a closer look under the cabinet, uh, we have the controllers mounted up still. Uh, and they both have their um, their little plugs in them. Uh, one thing I did find is that the plug that I got wasn't perfect, uh, and if it wasn't seated in there properly or at the right ankle, uh, it, it didn't work. So um, if you find this problem, what I ended up doing was there was a little yellow tip on the end of the plug. I just ended up cutting that off the razor knife. But anyways, they're plugged up now. They work. You can see that they are set to um, fast in wave mode one, and currently they're both off. So we're gonna go ahead and close this. We have both of our pumps on there, and then over here on the tablet, you can see we have uh, SW4 right and SW4 left. Uh, so what we'll go ahead and do, just to prove that it is connected to this, is we'll go ahead and let me look at the screen, it's a little easier. So, see the right one just turned on. And now I'm going to turn on the left one. And it just kicked on also 100%. So, looking back at the screen, um, there's basically on, off, and auto just on the Apex manual, uh, or Apex Fusion. So we'll go ahead and set it to auto and auto. And what that'll do is do the wave mode that I have set. So uh, if you can kind of see by this one, it's just basically a short pulse from 0 to 100%. And that one's doing the same thing. So in order to do that, uh, what you would have to do is go into your, your settings here and your little folder icon. And then you can see here I have uh, one that's called Wave 1, and that's a pump. So we'll go ahead and click on that so you can take a good look at it. Oops. Okay, so scrolling down, you can see it says Wave 1, type is pump, ID 1. Uh, the initial off time I just set to 0, uh, and then I also enabled the synchronize and divide by 10. Now what synchronize means, I believe, is any other profile or I guess variable speed port that's running this uh, speed profile is going to run at the same time so that way this, uh, the pumps are you know, kind of pulsing at the same time. Um, and then at least for this uh, setting. So on time uh, is five, off time is five. I also have to divide by 10, so it's, it's actually like half a second. Uh, minimum intensity zero, maximum intensity 100. Um, and then we'll go back. Let's see if we can go back to the dashboard into our settings icon oops it's kind of hard to click that on this tablet so if you look on here we have it just set to advance sw4 right uh, advance and I, I don't have all the waves that I want to do throughout the day because I just set this up right now for a demonstration but um, the first line of code is set wave one and then if time uh, basically 1 in the morning to 12 o'clock at night, uh, then it runs wave mode 1. So, yeah, that's basically how you set it up. And you can get more creative and just make more profiles. Um, let's see here. If we go to this and then we go to the folder icon. So you can see you can make as many profiles, 32 profiles if you wanted to. Um, basically for your pumps, your lights, or whatever it is. 
Um, so I just have that one right now, but I'd like to make multiple ones throughout the day um, to kind of just do different wave modes according to what's going on with the tank and with the lights. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and like, uh, comment if you have any questions, and feel free to subscribe. This is my tank, by the way. I haven't made any videos on it yet, but I did kind of want to show that these pumps are com <clears throat> compatible with the Apex. Uh, it, it's a little, uh, you know, DIY in there to get them hooked up. I mean, of course, you could get the older model pumps if you didn't have an Apex. Just get the RW series. And if you ever get an Apex in the future, you can get their little uh, module that connects to them. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do. Hope this video helps someone out on deciding whether or not they want to buy these pumps or if it's worth it to them. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing uh, more videos on uh, some other equipment that I have running in my tank soon. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace.